Hey guys, this is Alex Pierce from LightCellVR.com. I'm about to show you an interview from Tom Evans, the head of product for InCam. His interview is very technical and I wanna give you the Cliff Notes version up front and also sort of speak to why InCam is a little bit different than some of the competition. InCam is an inside out optical camera tracking system that can be used for virtual production or post VFX match moving. You can use tracking markers and infrared, but you also don't need to. So if you need to set up at a studio and you have time to set up tracking markers, great, you can use their infrared sensors. But let's say you have a shoot that's outside or you don't have time to set up tracking markers or your ceiling is way too high to set up tracking markers. Here you can use their default method without tracking markers at all. This makes it very flexible and allows you to set up a lot faster than some of the competition. You can mount the server to the camera operator and have it be wireless, and you can tell by their hardware that it's really meant to be used on set with mounting points everywhere. Lens calibration seems to be pretty straightforward. Something they announced at NAB is a feature called export, which allows you to get camera tracking data to the next level. They have had an FBX export for a long time, but their new features I think are very exciting. For instance, let's say you shoot an entire concert. Your editor makes a cut and gives you an EDL, and you can actually just plug that EDL straight into export, and it will spit out just the data you need with time code stamps and everything. They've also added Alembic and USD support. If you want the lens distortion, you can get an ST map and EXR per frame. Okay, enough for me. Let's hear from Tom. Hey, I'm Tom, I'm the product manager at NCAM. Um, we make a camera tracking solution. Um, it's kind of come from, uh, we have like a film background with it, so we've always kind of used it more um, on set for on set visualization. We're making a big push at the minute to really prove it in uh, like other use cases, so a lot more mixed reality, LED wall, um, sort of green screen use cases. Um, the way our te technology works, so it's, it's, it's pretty flexible in terms of we're not always uh, bound to have to use purpose-built markers, so we have a, like a natural tracking mode. Um, we found like that is really what you need for on-set usage, where you can't rely, um, well everything's changing, right? So you need to have something that can roll with those punches. Uh, we'll just talk a little bit about the actual hardware we've got on the, on the camera now. So I guess the core of our system um, is our camera bar. So this is like our new one, we call it the Mark II. Um, if anyone's ever saw our old system, um, it's, this is like about a third the size of our, of our first generation. Um, much lighter, much smaller, high resolution, um, like we're, we're real, real happy with it. What it's doing is essentially looking out into the world um, and finding features for it to track. Um, what's neat is that because it's so small and easy to mount, you don't have to kind of, it's very easy to find something for it to track. You're not limited uh, to like looking in the same direction as the camera lens. So quite often you, you kind of have setups like this where we, we add a little bit of Dutch to it or you're tracking maybe the ceiling. Um, we also have the ability like using an IR emitter if you want to go down the marker route. We use these special like uh, circular like markers. We, we, we recommend like a specific pattern. Um, so we can, we can kind of do that too if we need to. Um, from the camera bar, we take this back to what we call the connection box. So this is kind of a little bit of an, uh, I guess a hub on the camera. Um, it takes uh, the information from the lens. So in this case, we're using just a set of external encoders. Um, but we've got like pretty good support with like all the major um, lens encoding systems, so like Preston's, um, like uh, Tilter. Um, we actually we, we've really been using a lot of uh, the ARRI LDS data recently, so that's a really really useful way to get lens data into the system. Um, so once we take that into the box here, um, we have a wired Ethernet connection back to our tracking software. So this is run uh, on a server somewhere on set, um, and it's really it's using all the data that the camera bar is capturing. Um, what's quite neat with us is we have the ability if, to actually put that server on the camera too. So we're not, we're not doing it in this in this example, but um, like some users prefer to have like a slightly bigger equipment footprint on the camera, but then it's all self-contained. Uh, the benefit of that is that we can go fully wireless when you do that. Um, and yeah, it's, you do not worry about running tethers across set to get to get data back. So that's kind of a big thing for us is to really have quite a modular like system for all of our equipment, both in like the software side, but also on the hardware side. So 
like we kind of know it's not like a one size fits all gig you know and um having stuff uh where people can really on a like almost sort of shop by shop basis like actually makes the system work for them is a, is a really really big thing for us um so so yeah that's that's the incam hardware moving into like focusing on that kind of on set workflow something we're really keen about is um persisting all the data that gets used when you're on set um into like the later stages of the filmmaking process so we i mean we, we started kind of playing around with this originally back in 2012 um you know and we used to at the time just provide a like an fbx file from whatever we did on set and this would always get passed on to people in post but we found that it was never really um it's never really leveraged as much as it could be and quite often it was just kind of um, almost like housekeeping stuff that was preventing people from knowing how to use it it would either get lost or the artist who was working with it didn't have the or the data they needed to take advantage of it so we've kind of been quietly like internally testing this uh, new kind of product that we're calling export um, so this is going to be like our framework for recording and persisting tracking data um, throughout the, the VFX pipeline. Um, so what we do with it is it's a separate piece of software that you run anywhere on set. So it could be on the NCAM server, it could be on the renderer or on like a bespoke sort of third, third party uh, software, uh, hardware. Uh, what it does, it's designed just to listen to the NCAM server put all of that tracking data into it and record it. And we made it really robust. The whole thing's designed to kind of be uh, like able to handle the stuff that happens on set. So you can run multiple ones to get redundancy. We have like a pre and a post roll on it. So even if you miss a record trigger on the camera, you've got half a minute um, in, the, in the bank already. Um, what we do with that data, that's all kind of stored locally at the point of capture. The idea then is that's, that's kind of collated and handed off at the end of the day as kind of part of your, your daily's workflow. And all of that data exists in a database um, that an artist at any point can then query with our export tool. So this is like a, a web-based uh, UI. It just shows every single take, every shot, um, the time code in and out points. And so they can, instead of just generating like arbitrary, you know, FBX files, we're now like just targeting to exactly what the edit is. So if you want a whole take, you can, you can yank that out. If you've got, um, if you've got an, an EDL from your edit, uh, you can point that at it. It'll automatically read the EDL, pull all of the uh, relevant uh, data from the database, align all the in and out points. Um, and then we have a really configurable way um, of spinning the data out. So you, you have multiple formats. Everything from FBX, Alembic, USD. Um, we have a JSON importer, so you can take it into equ uh, 3D equalizer. Um, and then we also generate all the lens distortion ST maps. So we provide per frame EXR images. So you can really kind of define your own post workflow. We've, we've tried to really adopt as many of the standard file formats uh, to really allow people to kind of do what they need with it. We don't, we, we, we really don't want to be in the position where we're saying this is how you have to do it because everyone's got a different pipeline and is using different software and using it in different orders and stages. So yeah, we're really excited about it. And then, you know, it's, we built in a way that it's really, um, we can only add more data to it. So yeah, at the minute we're passing through the tracking information, but longer term, um, you know, things like the point cloud will be able to stream into it. Um, you know, and the idea is that we start putting it into match moving software um, and, you know, using it as a bootstrap for final solves. Um, so that's kind of the new thing we're pushing. And we, we've done like a, about a year and a half internal testing on a, on a big show with it. Um, and we, so we started talking about it. This is kind of the covers are coming off now. Um, and we hope to release it in the near future. Uh, yeah, so if you want any more information about uh, any of this, then uh, look us up on the website, um, ncamtech.com. Um, yeah, come check us out.